Hi everyone, and welcome to my review of the Paul Reed Smith Modern Eagle, commonly referred to as the ME1, um, but when this was released it was the first, so the one has been added since the range was expanded. This is the Modern Eagle. <laughs> These were made 2004 to 2007 and it was Paul Reed Smith's first real attempt to bridge the gap between the regular USA models and the private stock program. So these are made of some of the best woods that were available at the time. Um, we have a one piece mahogany back. We have what PRS call a highly figured maple top and we have a Brazilian rosewood neck and fingerboard. Um, you often see these described as having a solid rosewood neck and fingerboard but you can just see that they are two separate pieces of wood. They've got about four millimeters of fingerboard and then the rest is the solid neck shaft it has to be two pieces of wood, otherwise you wouldn't be able to get the truss rod in, amongst other things. In terms of the neck, you've got the standard PRS 25 inch scale, you've got 22 frets, uh, the usual PRS 10 inch fretboard radius. Now the frets are unique to this guitar. They're actually square topped, which sounds weird, but it makes playing experience absolutely effortless. You barely have to press the strings and you've got a perfectly clear clear note ringing out. If there's one criticism, if you've got a heavy left hand, it, it's possible to bend the string out of, um, out of tune. So this guitar definitely rewards a lighter left hand technique, but it also rewards a heavy right hand technique, which can take a little bit of adjusting to, um, but you, you subconsciously make those corrections and before long you don't even notice, don't even notice it. It's a wide fat neck and it feels slightly different to the other wide fat necks I've played. There's less of a V um, on the first few frets. 
then it smooths out into a nice D by about fret 7 or so. Um, I'm guessing because of the amount of hand sanding and carving that went into these guitars, they're all going to be different. Um, it is a wide fat neck, it just feels slightly different to the other wide fats that I've played. <laughs> In terms of hardware, you've got phase two tuners, um, but Paul has added grommets to them um, that add sustain. I'm not going to argue with that because I can't prove that they don't. Um, if he says they do, that's good enough for me. You've got master volume, master tone that are both wonderfully graduated um, and usable right across the whole sweep. Um, a nice touch is the volume pot is fairly low friction, the tone pot is a bit stiffer, um, which makes quick volume adjustments on the fly really easy, and you're less likely to knock the tone out of position. Um, you've got a push-pull, which when it's up voices the screw coils of uh, the respective pickups, and you've got a three-way toggle switch back here. Now the pickups themselves are unique to the Modern Eagle. Um, they're called the RP pickups, named after Ralph Perucci who designed them. Uh, they're very bright, which leads to some pretty Fender-ish split tones. Um, nice and spanky. No one's going to think you're playing a Strat or a Telecaster, but it can certainly get you in that ballpark. Um, they're Alnico magnet based and the bridge is about 9.5k, the neck is about 8.5k, so vintage hot, not not hot by any modern means, but a little more oomph than your typical PAF style pickup. Uh, the bridge is machined from a single lump of metal, um, and it's, it's a work of art in itself, um, absolutely beautifully engineered. People criticise these bridges um, because they're not adjustable um, for indi individual string intonation. Um, you can move the whole bridge itself backwards and forwards um, and slightly ang change the angle, so you can adjust intonation a little bit in that way. Um, but I've, I've played a lot of guitars with these bridges, and if you're not going super low, so if you're going perhaps down to D or C at a push, the intonation is fine actually, um, and same with strings, if you're not going super heavy strings the intonation is fine. Um, you might notice some problems as you get up to the really high frets on the bass strings, but who does that anyway for any length of time? Um, if you are tuning down to baritone territory then yes you're going to need an adjustable bridge, but for everybody else you can work with this. Intonation on the electric guitar is always a compromise. Um, it's just a little bit more of a compromise if you're going on low tunings on a, on a one piece bridge. But the tone benefits are there. More of the string is in contact with more of the bridge, which means more of the energy is transferred into the body of the guitar, which means the guitar resonates more and sustains more and that is fed back into the strings um, which gives you an improved tone. Um, now whether that's noticeable with all the other variables who knows but Paul designed this guitar for him and that's what he wanted and it works on this guitar. <laughs> Plug noodling on the sofa. The first thing you notice is the sustain. Still going, still going, still going. Stopped. Um, the second thing you notice is it doesn't sound like 
a regular electric guitar. Um, I don't know how they've done it, but it sounds like somebody's recorded an electric guitar and EQ'd out all the annoying frequencies that you normally get. It sounds like a produced tone. Now, whether that's just testament to the guys who made these, whether there's something in the combination of tone wood, um, whether it, there's a degree of witchcraft, um, I don't know, but it works. And that that wonderful um, that wonderful tone translates when you plug it in. Um, it's so easy to get a dialed in tone with this guitar. But likewise, it's equally rewarding when you sat at home on the sofa, unplugged, um, just noodling away or practicing. Now, we need to address the elephant in the room. And that's this right here. As I say, this is Brazilian rosewood, also known as jacaranda. Um, it was placed on Sites Appendix 1 back in the summer of 1992. Um, these guitars were made between 2004 and 2007. Now, Sites Appendix 1 is not to be confused with the sites regulations that are all over the music press at the moment um, with all the other species of rosewood. Um, all other species of rosewood have recently been placed in sites appendix 2 which is fairly easy to manage and won't create any problems um, for the higher end manufacturers. It, mu it is affecting mid-range guitars and low-end guitars. The high-end guys it's just a bit more paperwork for them to fill in. Sites Appendix 1 is an entirely different uh, kettle of endangered fish. Sites Appendix 1 covers species such as elephants, rhinos, tigers, Brazilian rosewood. Um, it's the highest level of protection um, Sites offers um, and it's almost impossible to bypass. Um, Customs officials in most countries are trained to spot Brazilian rosewood by its pores, which is, uh, which are totally different to any other species of rosewood. Um, as I say, Brazilian rosewood was placed on Sites Appendix 1 in the summer of 1992. These were made between 2004 and 2007, which means you cannot get import or export permits for these guitars. So as things stand at the current time, these cannot leave the country they're in because they will be confiscated and they may be destroyed. <laughs> Reiterate that point again. These were made after Brazilian rosewood was banned. Now, I'm not implying that the company did anything illegal. Um, what has happened is they can't prove the source um, was legal. Um, so, as long as you don't plan on leaving the country you're in and taking your modern eagle with you, it's not a problem. Um, who knows what the future holds, but at the current time, if the English modern eagles stay in England, if the American ones stay in America, it's not a problem at all, but it is something to bear in mind. <laughs> Modern Eagle was offered in eight finishes that at the time were unique to the Modern Eagle range. This one is Makati Amber. Um, it's a lovely yellowy orange hue, um, reminiscent of an old violin. Um, 
figuring in the maple moves in the light as you would expect. Um, now what was unusual at the time is PRS were famous for their dipped in glass look. Um, they're really really high gloss, high wearing poly finishes um, that look the same now as they did then. Uh, this guy here is 30 years old, um, getting on for. Very hard finish, um, probably looks the same as it did when it rolled off the production line. Um, these were different to other PRS at the time because they've got an ultra, ultra thin nitrocellulose finish. Um, and that complements the bare rosewood on the neck absolutely wonderfully. You can't tell where one ends and the other begins. Um, even between the mahogany and the maple there is no ridge or crack or anything. It's, it's just an organic, seamless flow of wood. Um, and that is, that is a big factor um, in the resonance of this thing. Um, when other manufacturers do satin nitro finishes, it can sometimes feel like a, like a lemon peel or an orange peel. Um, there'll be dimples, it'll be rough, um, it won't be evenly applied. Um, I've never ever seen a satin, satin nitro finish applied this well on any guitar. <laughs> high-end guitars. I've played a lot of PRS guitars. I've played a few PRS private stock guitars. And in terms of build quality, these are up there with the private stock stuff. I know a few guys who say they prefer these to private stock guitars and I can really see why. Build quality is flawless. The finish is expertly applied. The sound and the resonance are first class. As these are as good as guitar building gets. In terms of price, bearing in mind these are as good as guitar building gets, they're not ridiculously expensive. Um, they're about the same as a second hand Gibson R9 or a master built Fender Custom Shop. Um, they're certainly cheaper than a second-hand PRS private stock. For a player grade private sale in the UK with chips and dings and scratches you're looking at around £3,000. For a pristine one um, you're looking at about £3,500. Um, for a retail sale you're probably looking nearer £4,000. So as I say, when compared to the competitors from Gibson and Fender Custom Shop, it's on a par. Um, and I think the combination of materials, Brazilian roadwoods, rosewood necks are rare these days, um, well worth the money. And you're not going to lose money on that deal. Um, there's not many guitars that you can say are going to appreciate in value. Um, this could well be one of them in 20, 30, 40 years time. It's possible that you'll see a return on your investment if that's the way you want to look at it.
couple of thank yous. I'd like to thank Gary Randall for lending me this guitar um, to let me get to know it, let me spend some time with it. And his plan has worked because I am now seriously gassing for a modern needle of my own. Um, so again, this is as good as guitar building gets. And it's just cemented the, the gas that I've had since 2004, since I first saw one of these in Guitarist magazine. Um, I need one. I need one. Um, so thank you, Gary, for costing me a lot of money. Um, <laughs> but thank you all for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please go and have a look at my website, www.guitargo.co.uk. Um, soon to be plenty of videos, plenty of content on there. Um, if you've really enjoyed it, um, there's also a tip jar on the website um, to help me raise funds for a solo album that I'm trying to make. Um, any donations are absolutely wonderfully gratefully received. Um, again, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.